Good morning everyone and this morning, I don't want my reflection on this, I'm sharing, oh my goodness me, if that silly boy, can you just stop it, thank you. This morning, oh, okay we'll just have to, just have to make the most of this with silly boy Jack in the background. This morning I'm sharing this photograph of someone very special to me and who was very, very special to my mother. My mother was named after her father, this lady's father, okay. Now, it's one of those circuitous sort of all around the houses videos because, you know, there's, there's no... Sorry for laughing. It's a silly boy. There's no script. There's never a script and there's never an edit. Okay. This is this is just how it goes. This is my great grandmother. I think I've got that right. Emma Duggan. And the reason why I am showing you the photograph of Emma is because this morning I got a beautiful letter a beautiful letter from County Kerry um, from a lovely lady called Helen Helen Duggan thank you Helen for your lovely letter and for some reason or other Jack has decided to play silly boy and I think he might just be trying to make you laugh bring a little joy into your life that that's that's what I'm picking up because I've just sat and read your letter you see and um, it's it's a it's a deeply personal letter and I understand so I won't be sharing it with anyone but suffice to say that regardless of what we have to go through in this life, because there's many, many, many joyful aspects, and there are some sad aspects too. But despite all that, this is our own personal journey, and we have to make the most of it. And we have to allow ourselves to be joyful regardless of whatever sadness we have to endure. So maybe this is what Jack is saying to us this morning. Live life for the day that's in it. For the day that's in it. Anyway, Helen, it's very interesting to have got to the end of your letter and seen your name because recently over the past I don't know six months or so I've been thinking a lot about this lady who was so dear to my mother this is a picture of Emma Emma Duggan whose father was called Patrick and my mother was named Patricia after Emma's father um, Patrick came from Ireland, I don't know what part, um, it's written down somewhere. Um, Patrick came from Ireland and um, uh, was, was I, think he, I think he joined a regiment, but anyway he was stationed in Aldershot and he had seven children I think and Emma was one of them. And um, she was a rare lady for her time. Because uh, Emma was educated. Emma could read and write. She was literate. And of course in those days, you know, girls weren't sent to school unless they were part of a, of a fairly wealthy or well-to-do family. So this is a picture of Emma, my great-grandmother, holding my grandfather on her lap. Now my grandfather was born in Africa because Emma... Um, Emma married um, 
fairly well and um, her husband was called Taylor, his surname was Taylor Shire and uh, his, his family didn't even approve of Emma so that's how high and mighty they were but um, they did buy him a commission and I think in those days you could buy a commission in the in the uh, in the foreign services, so to speak. Uh, I suppose it would be likened now to the diplomatic corps. But um, they were stationed in South Africa, and um, so my grandfather, who's seen here on Emma's lap, and he was called Ralph Ralph Taylor. Ralph Taylor Shire was born in South Africa. Actually, had an African wet nurse which was, um, you know, de rigueur at the time. So, there's a little link, Helen. There's a little link between you and I. The Duggins. My mother, because um, Ralph married um, Lillian Smith, and Lillian was a lovely lady, but uh, I think her mothering skills were not sort of up there. And I know that my grandfather wasn't a great husband to her. So between both of those struggles, um, raising children perhaps wasn't as, wasn't as wonderful an experience as it should have been. But then in those days, you know, when you had a lot of children, my goodness me, there was hardship. But um, Emma here provided a, a wonderful sanctuary of love and beautiful routine for my mother. And my mother always, when she spoke of parenting, when she spoke of love, when she spoke of people who were incredibly important to her, always spoke of her grandmother, Emma, Emma Duggan. And she would always say, Emma came from good stock. So, anyway. So, Helen, you have invited me to Kerry, and I'd love to take up your offer. And so sometime, perhaps in the early autumn, um, it would be lovely to visit you. Be delighted to. And Helen, you've planted all these trees. And um, I just love to see them. I just love to walk among them and share your joy at all the beautiful planting that you've done. So... Yes, it would be lovely to take a, a, a day or two off, um, perhaps in early September, and come to visit you. It would be delightful. I'd be delighted. <laughs> this silly boy. This silly boy. Okay, okay. I think Helen has got the message. I'm quite sure you've made her laugh. Now, we'll just go up to the stone circle because I got a few more little prayer flags, hope flags, dream flags. Um, and I've hung them up. So I just want to show you. I'm glad you liked last night's video. I... I did put the title up as the first ever cooking video because I feel it was the first ever that was solely dedicated to cooking from beginning to end. And it wasn't just something that I was showing you that I had made, but it was something that I was showing you as I made it. So I think that's why I, I emphasise it was the first ever. I will do more. Um, because, of course, those of you who are familiar with Bealton Cottage are familiar with the fact that I have very little time to spend in the kitchen because I'm, you know, doing stuff all the time and usually when I go into the kitchen it's because I'm hungry, which is usually a bad sign because you should be a bit more prepared than that.
So let's count the flags. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. There's lots and lots of room for many more. So please don't be shy about sending something to hang here in the circle. Um, of course it has to be 10 by 5 centimetres and should be of a natural material which will go back to the earth. But they will hang here for as long as they hang here. I won't be moving them. Now, hmm, Jack's gone round the corner there. Let me just follow him and see. Now look at this Jack. There's a, a stone here, look. And you see on the stone all this bird poop and it's looking like those little birdies were enjoying some of the black currants. Isn't that a lovely sight to see? Let's have a little peep up around the corner here. We very rarely go into this little area. But I came up here, um, was it yesterday or the day before? And I just seen, you see all this flattened grass? Well, this wasn't me. This is where a little creature could be a little fox or even a badger, has been frolicking around here at night. And in fact, I think it's gone up through that way, you see. And out through, there's a tiny, tiny little gap in the fence there, just big enough for a little fox, I think. So, you just see all this flattened grass, a few nice bits of stone here, which I must take out and of course this is this is one of my little hidden areas there are more and more little hidden areas because as everything grows there's more little places and spaces where one can just hide out and chill out a bit like Sherwood Forest Now, so on that note, I'm going to bid you farewell here in the Stone Circle because I want to go into town. The market's on today. Have a lovely day, everybody. And be joyful. If you feel like laughing, laugh. <laughs> Don't even think to yourself, is this appropriate? Am I in, a, in an appropriate space? <laughs> the world needs as much joy as we can possibly bring to it. Now look at that. Isn't that a joyful space? A little walnut tree there. Blessings to you all.